what did you see on film when you rewatched uh, some of their longer passes? Yeah, we made some we made some um, some mistakes, and um, I don't even want to say it was communication errors. There were some technique errors that that uh, some eye discipline errors that uh, we got to get cleaned up. I mean, there's there's no way around that. I mean, there's nothing. Um, you know, I've got to do a better job of, of making sure guys understand exactly what they're doing, and then guys got to got to do a better job of of doing it. You know, and and there's not a lot of, uh, um, you know, we, there was a lot of stretches where we played really good defense, but when you give up explosive plays at that at that uh, frequency, you're going to have a, a long hard day, and it's been a, it's been a long hard week uh, because of it. You never want it to happen, but is there part of it? It's almost good that it happened before the Arizona game. Is it about to play a team that wants <laughs> yeah, to do that? Not a great sequence right here, is it? That uh, that you're going to play an explosive passing team. It's just. Um, no, I don't think so. I think our guys um, have a lot of confidence in themselves and they have a lot of pride. You bet. It's, it, there's a lot of great lessons learned and it's, it's much better to learn them on a win. But, um, you know, I think we're better than that. I think um, as a unit, I think we're better than that. As, a, as, as an individual, I can be better in that. And so um, I, uh, hopefully we can get this cleaned up very soon. Something Arizona does a lot of is play under center, which – I mean, just doesn't happen in college football much nowadays. Does that present any unique challenges to sort it of does. how they use their under center? Yeah, players? it's rare. It's rare. Uh, uh, sometimes you get some tips from from backfields and things that uh, uh, that you use, and and you know they they sometimes don't give that to you. I'm not sure how much they'll do uh, with that, but that's um, that's a unique thing, and I think that's a, a big part of why uh, you know you still see a lot of that in the National Football League too, because I think people clue into that stuff pretty well. And and uh, when you're in in the shotgun, and um, you know they don't have a running quarterback, uh, at least not they're not designing runs for him. So I don't I don't you know there's no reason not to be under center. You know sometimes people go in the gun even though they're running under center plays just so they can have the threat of, of running the quarterback. And I don't think they, they care about that. They're, they're going to neutralize you in that by running bootlegs and stuff like that to get him on the perimeter. What's the biggest thing that you guys have to do to, I guess, defend against under center? Um, we still have to be disciplined with our keys. You know, there's still some, um, some big play action shots that are going to come out of that. And there's still some, um, some downhill run game that we're going to have to dominate the line of scrimmage. I mean, and that's going to be – at the end of the day, there's you know we're going to have to control the line of scrimmage, and we're going to have to stay on top of some of the bigger bigger plays, and 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 the, some of the shorter passes can't turn into catch and runs. You know those are those are those are the three keys right there. If we do those things, uh, we'll be okay. He's a he's a tremendous football player. Just his catch radius and. Um, <laughs> You know his range, the, the the way he uses his body to keep defenders uh, away from him, uh, and the accuracy of Noah Fafita. Really, I mean, the, all in tandem make him. You know, I, I'd like to see anybody more dangerous in, in college football right now. What did Northern Arizona do that was somewhat effective? Well, I thought they mixed things up okay against them. Truthfully, I thought uh, Arizona probably shot themselves in the foot more than Northern Arizona just just stop them. I mean, they, they would drive and then they'd get a, a penalty. They would drive and they'd turn it over. They would, you know, I don't know if there was ever just a, a um, they certainly didn't dominate them defensively. Um, I think uh, Arizona just probably uh, uh, had a couple of drive stopping mistakes. And so, um, but they did do a nice job of, of designing some blitzes and, and getting, um, you know, the back and protection. I thought they did a nice job of mixing up their coverages, and, and they, they played really hard. At the end of the day, uh, that's that was the biggest thing that noticed is they, they had a bunch of guys that just played their butts off, and that's what we're going to have to do. What does to do the best? I think he's really accurate. I think he's got a great command of where he's throwing the football. To me, his best trait is his vision. Uh, I think he sees things really well. I think he sees coverage as well, and I think he knows where to put the football. You know, if he, he sees leverages, he sees stems, he sees – and and his accuracy – uh, can get it there. Now, it, it, the other thing about him is his arm talent can throw it anywhere in the field. I mean, he's, he can throw the field out. He can throw a 60-yard post. He can do any of those things. And, um, you know, we're going to have to, you know, hopefully uh, he's looking up at the sky because it's hard to throw when you're looking that direction. There's a player or two for you guys where you just think this man has had an excellent two games for you. Marquis Siegel. Marquis has been excellent. Jacob Parrish has been excellent. Uh, Brendan Mott has been excellent. Those three guys come to mind right away. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of guys that have been really good, um, but uh, but those three those three guys have been 
awesome. And and I'll, I'll be honest with you, if it wasn't for Marquise Siegel's leadership the other night uh, at halftime, you know, getting the band back together a little bit, uh, I don't know how we come out in the second half. He was he was uh, a star among stars the other night. How encouraging was it for you to see a couple of younger guys, Austin and Jack, combined for the big play? Yeah, that was that was really cool. And you know, uh, you know, Austin ha- has played a tremendous football game. And Jack, I probably should have played him a little bit more. Um, he, he, Jack's not afraid of the moment. You know, Austin's been in the moment a little bit. You know, he's played in some big games here and, and played a lot of snaps. But, but Jack, to, to, you know, I wonder how many guys on our defense would have had the stones to, to pick that ball up rather than just diving on it, you know, like a pot of gold. And, you know, he scooped it up like it wasn't anything. It's something we work on every Tuesday. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, um, drill that we always do and and he by gosh he took it to the field and and scored and and that was probably the difference in the game is that an easy drill to do or how do you simulate that's a coach malone thing you know we we try to just get the ball going in all different kinds of ways we call it we call it country ball you know country ball meaning there's a big wide open space in the country you know get your knuckles on the ground and scoop that thing up like a baseball player and jack has an awesome baseball background he could probably play college baseball here if he wanted to so he's um he's used to that and he just did it and I asked him what he was thinking, and he said, "I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just wanting to make sure I didn't fall down." So I'm, I was excited about uh, about him and, and and having his breakout moment there.